Let's now specifically look at liquids. And let's look at the properties of liquids and how those are defined by my intermolecular forces. We're going to specifically look at viscosity, surface tension, and capillary rise. We have already defined a liquid as a state of matter in which the shape is defined by the container it is in contact with. The intermolecular forces, hydrogen bonding, dispersion, and dipole forces, they actually pull these liquid molecules closer together, keeping the molecules from expanding continuously and actually becoming a gas. These liquid molecule to liquid molecule interactions are called cohesive forces. However, my molecules are also in contact with a container, so they will also interact with that container. These liquid molecule to solid container interactions are referred to as cohesive forces. For example, in this schematic here, we can see that these water molecules are actually interacting with each other, represented here by these black lines are the hydrogen bonds, but there are also dispersion forces and there are dipole-dipole forces. They actually pull the molecules closer together. But in addition, we have adhesive forces. There is an interaction between the water molecules and in this case, this solid material that it is in contact with. Those are adhesive forces. The physical properties of liquids can be correlated quite well to the intermolecular attractions present in the molecules, but also we need to include these cohesive and adhesive forces. And they actually are correlated well with surface tension, viscosity, and capillary action. You know surface tension, that's why water beads up on certain surfaces, and that's why small bugs and animals can actually walk on water. That's due to the adhesive forces between a liquid and a solid. We also think about water as either being a viscous or a non-viscous solution. We consider water, which can pour very easily, as being a non-viscous liquid, whereas compounds like honey are very slow pouring. We call those high viscosity liquids. Another property of liquids is called capillary action. And that's the interaction, the adhesive interaction between a liquid and solid, which is shown here in this capillary action when taking a blood sample in a small pipette, or in looking how you can actually wick a liquid up in a cloth material from one container to the next container, capillary action. And we'll discuss all three of these. So why do liquids actually bead up on certain surfaces? That is related to the phenomena that we call surface tension. For example, here I have liquid mercury on this glass plate and it tends to bead up. We can actually look at the intermolecular forces here to explain that. If I look at all the molecules that are sort of on top, they actually have an uneven distribution of forces. So they're actually being attracted to one side where there's nothing above that to attract these molecules. So these intermolecular forces are all pulling down toward the bottom here. Whereas if I go somewhere down in the middle of the liquid, that actually the traction is equal in all directions. So that accounts for the fact that I can actually create these beads of liquid on certain surfaces. I have an unequal attraction on one side of a liquid that draws that liquid down. The relative strength of cohesive and adhesive forces actually depend greatly on, on what the compound is as a way of Illustrating this, we can look at both water and at mercury. So if I look at water and we put that in a test tube, I can actually see a concave meniscus at the top of the water. If I looked at mercury, it actually has a convex meniscus at the top of the mercury. And we can look at that by just looking at the adhesive versus cohesive forces. 
if we look at here at this illustration, and this little line here sort of represents the sort of barrier between the solid material, which in this case would be glass, which is SiO2, and the liquid, which is water. If my adhesion is greater than my cohesive forces, the water molecules tend to adhere to the wall more. So they sort of climb up the wall, if you will, near the wall, and they're sort of down at the end here. Okay. If I look at mercury on the other case, again, I represent my glass solid here, the wall that the mercury is up against as my SiO2 molecules. In this case, my cohesive forces are actually greater than my adhesive forces. And so in this case, the attraction between mercury and mercury, the force is greater than mercury and the wall or the molecules that make up the solid, which then tends to have the top of these actually have a higher level, a convex meniscus. The third property of liquids that we're going to discuss relative to adhesive and cohesive forces is viscosity. And viscosity can actually be defined as the resistance to flow. So high viscosity materials tend to flow slowly, it's like honey and corn syrup. Low viscosity tend to flow fast, like water and gasoline. So high viscosity is caused by a large intermolecular attractions and for molecules that are very large they tend to be also entanglement of those molecules which also causes more intermolecular forces so at high temperatures usually the viscosity is lower because we're actually breaking up some of those intermolecular forces and allowing those molecules to sort of slide by each other e easier so molecules typically have to overcome some energy barrier, another to move past each other. If we increase the temperature, we increase the average energy of those molecules, and they can actually overcome that barrier and move past each other easier, lowering the viscosity. In other words, they can flow easier. Low viscosity, high viscosity material. Let's now look at several materials and let's compare their viscosities and surface tensions. If I look at the materials like pentane and benzene, they contain just carbon and hydrogen, so they do not have any hydrogen bonding capabilities. They actually have here what we're going to call is very low viscosity, 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4 newtons per times seconds per meter squared and 6.5 times 10 to the minus 4. Once I start introducing oxygens and hydrogens, materials that can actually hydrogen bond, my viscosity goes up. So water and methanol are higher in viscosity than pentane and benzene. If I look at this material here, glycerol down at the bottom here, I actually have three hydroxy groups, OH. All three of those can hydrogen bond. And look at the viscosity. It is very high viscosity. That's because I have a lot of intermolecular hydrogen bonding going on with glycerol, which makes it hard to move past each other. We look at surface tension here, and most of these organic molecules, pentane, benzene, ethanol, and glycerol, they all have a very similar type of surface tension. However, mercury has a very different surface tension in joules per meter squared. And that's why this forms that convex structure when we put it in a test tube.
Let's now look at a third property of liquids, capillary action. When a liquid, for example water, meets a solid surface, for example glass, there are intermolecular forces between the molecules of the liquid and the molecules of the solid, solid glass. We call those adhesive forces. If we have a surface, for example, in a small tube, which is a capillary tube, the adhesive forces are greater than the cohesive forces, the forces between molecules. This phenomenon then results in what we know as capillary action, and that's the ability of a liquid to actually move up a tube against all the other forces, which are both gravity in most cases here on Earth, and the intermolecular forces between molecules, the cohesive forces. So if I look at a glass tube, as represented by this test tube here, I have cohesive forces between molecules, and I have adhesive forces between my liquid and my solid. If the surface area is very small, in other words, I have a very small capillary tube with a narrow tube down it, the water is actually attracted up that tube until it reaches a point where the forces of gravity sort of cause it to stop moving up. If I look at a larger tube, it doesn't move up quite as far. That's because I have less interaction between my liquid and my solid. I have fewer adhesive forces. And eventually, I get to a size of tube where I have no, hardly any interaction between the liquid and solid, and it moves up very short distances. This same capillary action is responsible for liquids actually wicking up in like a paper towel. And that's sort of illustrated here where I take a paper towel and I actually dip one end into a liquid like wine. The wine is actually has an attractive forces for the solid, which is the paper towel here, and the liquid tends to move up them by capillary action. So my solid in this case is actually just cellulose fibers in most types of paper towels. And my liquid here is a combination of both water and ethanol. So here I'm still looking at the competition between adhesive forces and cohesive forces.